Hello, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing okay. Uh, for many of you, is it's the evening or nighttime here in Canada. And for those of you in Africa, it's probably morning. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what's happening in Sudan and how it connects to South Sudan and how it connects to the ancient empire of the Kush and what type of time we're in right now. So as we know, the empire of Kush is, is probably known to be situated in North Sudan. In, a, in the capital, it's called, I, I shorten it, I call it Mir. Uh, for a lot of people, they, they it's Mirawi, Miro, or Mirawi. So what had happened was the land belonged to the Kushite, and the Kushite are the modern-day Nilotics who are, who are along the Nile Valley. They're known as the Nile Valley Civilization. As a result of Egypt falling in the 5th century to Persia, um, the continent was infiltrated with a bunch of people of ancient descent or European descent. So it began the gradual whitening of North, Northern Africa and Eastern Africa because of the uh, either forced uh, marriages or intermarriages or whatever situation that occurred for that to happen. Because of that, there was a lot of interest involved in Africa in terms of politics and empire and dynasties and all of those things. So the Nau Valley civilization, we've been fighting for several thousands of years to stay relevant, to, to be alive, to not, to not become obsolete. So if you look at modern day South Sudan, that's our second home. Our original home was Mer and Khartoum. Those are our homeland. We were chased by the modern day Arabs and the Arabized African. So what had happened when Kemet fell to the Arabs and the white people, uh, the Nubians were chased out. Uh, some are left there, they're in Aswan. So when they were chased out, uh, Kush land became a place of refuge. But we were also chased out by the same Nubians who were allied with the Arabs and other nomads. And then we were chased out of Khartoum and Mir. We were chased to what is now called South Sudan. So it was, it was difficult. We're survivors of genocide. And when Sudan, when, when we fell as a people, the genesis of us, of Kush falling as an empire really began with the kingdom of Aksum in the third or fourth century when the kingdom of Aksum allied with likes of Yemen and other Arab nomads and other African tribes that were allied to them, they attacked us. They attacked us. And so having, having that type of a pressure, both from the north and the south, it, it crumbled Kush. And we retreated into the southern region, which is very like green and lush and it, it, it's vegetation. So we were there. So the Nilata people were there surviving and we became primitive because if you have survived a genocide a holocaust brought on by people who are supposed to be allied to you you're not thinking about regenerating the empire you're not you lost all your manuscript you lost everything in your departure from your homeland so we became primitive we dealt how we are we understand we know our ancestry we know what we did before but we became primitive and our primitivity was our protection because no one saw us as, as a threat really in the region because we're in a very destitute situation we're focusing on our cattle we are just taking care of ourselves so we we kind of let that whole thing go but our prophets and our god which is dang ted and in the Christian community, you know him as Yahweh. It's the same God. He promised us restoration. He promised the restoration of Cush. So for those who are interested, read Isaiah 18 until Isaiah 66. And you can understand what happened to Cush and how Cush is going to be restored. And for those who understand the genesis of Cush and, and the, the colonies of Cush, according to the Bible, you can start in Genesis. For those who are interested in history, you can read books like The Progenies of the Babylonian Empire, which is talking about the, the President Nilox in South Sudan, and The Wonderful Ethiopian by Drusilla Dunji Houston. You can read that book. I'll put the link up there.
because our our present state was not our uh, state in the in the past. We were renowned, like we had colonies, we had relationships, we had kinship with the whole wide world, and we were respected as a people. And so it's very important to understand that we're still alive, we're not extinct, we, we speak our native tongue, we're here, and Khartoum and Mir and all the other, the whole, the whole Sudan belongs to the Kushites. All we wanted was peaceful coexistence. But when you have the colonizer saying, like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to make sure you become obsolete, then then it becomes problematic because now we cannot coexist. That's why South Sudan wanted independence from the North because we were their, we were their target practice, you know. Killing us was, was no big deal and abusing us, enslaving us, like, it was no big deal. So can, can you imagine... The children of Kush being depleted, being depleted of life force, of human blood, of, 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 of numbers. We were being depleted. We were being taken out of this world. Also, separation had to occur so the remnants of Kush can, can breathe, can, can have a good time, can be human, can, can become, what you call it, re regenerated. Like, we, we, need, we needed that time. And so we had to become independent of the North because of the uh, human right abuse that we were facing. So it wasn't, you know, the war crimes and the atrocities committed towards us is what caused us to become a separate state. Because black skin was not welcome. We were seen as less than. We were secondary citizens. So what's happening in the North is what ha it what's been happening to us for, for many thousands of years. When are we going to learn? It matters who belongs to the land. A land is good for all when the, the first person, the native person, is respected, is given their, their land and their freedom. Then the rest of the human population can enjoy the land as well. So the whole point of this talk is that the Kushites are back. The whole Sudan is theirs. And any other colony that we had in the ancient time will return to us in terms of credit. We don't need to recolonize. We don't need to, to, to live in those lands. We need the credit that we deserve, that we did what we did, and we're still alive, and we're here breathing. And the time has come for, for the children of Christ to understand that their power is back. Things are going to change for us. Your power is back. All of it is back. You're restored. Yahweh has restored you. Dang Teth has restored you. You're restored. And I want the, the children of Kush from this point on to understand that you are restored. Kush is African legacy. It's the black man's legacy. All the way from southern Iraq to Timbuktu is the black man's legacy. You did that. And so you are restored. Your restoration is good for the planet. Because if, because if Africa can heal, the planet can heal. People are tired of war. They're tired of tribalism. They're tired of racism. People want inclusivity. They want to live in lands where love, democracy, human right, respect, all of that is a way of life. We're back to the time where, when the Kushai ruled, there was peace on earth. Human beings were free to be human beings. The dignity of the African man is back. He's restored. And all that I'm talking about, you will see with your own eyes this year what I'm talking about. We are restored. We're back. Our, the color of our skin is not a badge of shame. It's divinity. We are the firstborn of this earth. Our skin resembles the soil in which we were made from. By Deng Tet, we are back. And I would like for all the children in South Sudan and in Africa as a whole to understand that your dignity is your back. You are restored. And your restoration is going to bring healing to the diaspora as well. Our African-American brothers and sisters, 
or African Latinas and Latinos, or African and Caribbean brothers and sisters, this is their restoration as well. The restoration of Kush is not about South Sudan being stable. The restoration of Kush is about the whole black diaspora and those on the African continent having peace, having a homeland. Mir belong to all of us. Mir is, is our legacy, is our dignity, is our land. Mir is all, is all of us, is the legacy of West Africans, of East Africans, North Africans, Southern Africans, Central Africans. Mir is our legacy. Because when the Kushite were at their highest, the whole, the whole of Africa worked together with various different dynasties and empires, and we had a peaceful relationship. We had respect. So the restoration of Mir, the restoration of the Kushite is the restoration of Africa and the restoration of the black man. So I just want you guys to understand that we're back and we're a prophetic people. Prophecies have been spoken about for the last 5,000 years, 6,000 years, 2,000 years, and 1,000 years. We're back. And it's a privilege to tell you that we're back and you're going to see a whole lot of things unfolding this year to confirm what I'm telling you. So in the meantime, read the progeny of the, the Babylon Empire and the wonderful Ethiopian of the ancient Kushite Kushi, Kushi Empire. Like read, prepare yourself. This, 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 this regeneration is not about hate for the fellow man. It's really about restoration of our worthiness and our value and our, our, our humanity and for the world to understand that our condition we were on pause dang tev put us on pause because he doesn't want us to become extinct because had we not been put on pause we would be fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting for our humanity, for our, for our recognition, for everything. We would we would have become extinct. So he said, be, just become, just be primitive. Just be destitute. Let them see you like this simple thing that they feel sorry for. And it worked. Because in our simplicity, we thrived. We regenerated. Regeneration happened, and all of these things happened. We were back now. So, Dang Tet's plans are very perfect. They have no flaws. And the time has come for you to understand that as a woman or a man, at this point in April 2023, it's like you can, you please start a new life. Whatever was holding you back is finished. I haven't spoken in four months because I knew this is the year that Dang Tez liberates Kush. And I'm like, I'm going to let Dang Tez do the talking. I'm going to let him do the showing. And he has. And I will continue to let him do the rest. But I just want you to know that prepare yourself for all these things that's coming your way. You're being restored in so many different ways. So I think I made a post about the lions um, being spotted in Chad. I think they were saying that they hadn't seen, that they haven't been spotted in that area for 20 years. Then in Khartoum, I'm assuming that maybe the lion was let out in the cage from a zoo. I'm not sure. But lion is what? Lion is, an, is, is our symbol of power. The lioness and the lion, they work as a team. They do things as a team for the well-being of the family. It's power. So what I want what I want to say about that, that sighting is saying power. Power is back. The black woman will no longer be unprotected. She is the first mother of the earth. And she is fully protected by Dang Teb. Dang Teb knows her plight. In our culture, it goes, it goes, it goes dang Ted, the woman, then the father, and then the children. Because a woman is close to God. That's how important she is. 
she, the black woman will be restored. So the restoration happen, ha, is happening as we speak. That's why when you see things like, you know, soft girl era or things like that, or uh, or, or my quiet season, it's not accidental. It's the time has come for the black woman to breathe. It's here now. This season, the black man is restored to, to take his rightful place, to do, the, to do the right thing by his continent, by his family, by his community. It's restoration season. The prophets, the seers, the elders, the preachers, they're gonna they're they're gonna come out in this this year, and and help in the restoration. It's a collective effort. And it is not just the black community healing on its own. Those who are our allies, who love us, who want to see us heal, they're gonna help us too. So this restoration is not just unique to us or or just to us. A lot of people want to know their roots. They want to know who they are. They want to know the human story. And you cannot tell the human story without talking about the first family, the firstborn, the first of everything, which is the black woman and the black man. So I'm happy to announce that you are being restored as we speak. The The barrier between you and your creator is, 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 is lifted. So you speak and, and, and you shall be answered too. So... Let's continue this conversation as the event unfolds. But I hope you understand now that it's unfortunate what's happening in Sudan, but it was in the prophecies. They could they could they couldn't get away from it. But in the end, Sudan as a whole, under the Kushet will be restored and we will go back to our ancient way of doing things. So I hope people have a little bit more understanding of what's going on. Uh, thank you, and we'll talk again next time.